Hello and welcome back to this last part of our Yosemite adventure, Lyle Canyon back out to Tuolumne Meadows. In this edition, we walked to a cool and serene Lyle Canyon as a light fog wafted gently over the creek. Even as backpackers who were taking down their tents and packing up their gear for the hike up the John Muir Trail whispered, I could hear their voices drifting over the meadow. Well, that was except for the two families with small children camped across from us in an illegal campsite. The children were having a terrible time. We could hear the crying from one of the little ones. I want to go home. Now, I hate to be the grumpy old man who hates kids, but maybe they were better off sticking to the car-based campground. Well, at least until the kids got a little older. Anyway, I'll talk more about this later in the video. Let's get on to this last part of our adventure, the hike out of Wild Canyon to Tuolumne Meadows. Well, good morning. Today is uh, August 8th, Saturday. This is uh, our last day here in Yosemite National Park. Um, we're going to be packing up in uh, down here by the meadow of Lyle Canyon, and we're going to be heading out to a Twalton Meadows. And uh, it's been a pretty good trip. Um, it's really damp right now. Jerry checked his, uh, his uh, thermometer and his humidifier in his tent. It was 70 percent humidity right now, so it's, everything's really damp. Well, maybe it's because of the rain from yesterday, the thunderstorm we had. And uh, I'm going to check my thermometer. I'm cooking now. I'm done here in the ground. Actually, it's right there. Uh, I'm just making some coffee this morning. It's a uh, it's only about 40 degrees, but it seemed a lot colder than that. It's like the, the dampness just seems to go right through your bones. I'm sitting out here on the rock, I've got every layer that I have on, and uh, it's still cold. So hopefully I'll warm up here in a little bit and get some hot fluids in me. And then uh, after we have breakfast, we're going to pack up and hit the road. And uh, it's only about five miles, maybe a little over from here to the car, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, it should be downhill, and uh, well, as they say, mostly downhill. Uh, and it shouldn't take too long. It would take more than a couple of hours to get back in the car. So if we get out of here by nine. Eh, probably home. Home. <laughs> we'll be back in the car probably by probably by I don't know. I'd say twelve or one the latest. I would think it'd be much later than that. So then we get to drive home. So anyway, we wait for this uh, coffee to warm up. It's almost at a boil. It's probably close enough because I'm just drinking coffee. It doesn't need to be a full boil anyway. Behind me is the uh, vile fork of the Tuolumne River. It cascades down from the higher elevations, works its way down towards Tuolumne. It's about uh, 6.30 in the morning, cold and damp down here. The cold just tends to sit down here along the water. But pretty stunning view here today.
going for the morning stroll here. The sun's come out over the hills. It's gorgeous down here. As long as you stay in the sun, you're fine. Even in the shade, you feel the, uh, the 40 degree temperatures and the dampness. But I was hoping I'd get a shot at uh, maybe a deer or two or maybe a bear this morning. All I see is birds. We did see a couple of deer last night, but it is definitely gorgeous down here. Cool place to have a cabin. But we're going to be hiking out today. It's about five miles. And uh, she'll be back in the car. Not too long in time. There's some people behind me over here. That big expanse, right? That big grant slab. And we can take us some pictures, take us some selfies down there. Don't blame them. I already did that. But it's just gorgeous right here. Great spot to be. In Yosemite National Park, the upper end off Tioga Pass Road, Highway 120. Not too far from uh, Tuolumne. On the John Muir Trail beside uh, the Lyle Fork of the Ptolemy River and going through this shady stretch here. We only got two miles to go to get back to the car parked at Dog Lake. That'll conclude our about a 25, 26 mile loop. Oh, Maybe more than that if you had the day hike. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of nice to be down here in the shade because even though those meadows are gorgeous, the sun's kind of warm. And we're not at 10,000 feet like we were earlier in the week. We're only at like 78, I think, right here. 84, somewhere in there. So lower elevation means more heat. I can't believe this is day four and we have yet to see a bear. We have about an hour left hiking probably and that's gonna be our only chance. Been a good trip. My legs are feeling it, my hips are feeling it. Back and my shoulders feel pretty good this trip, but my knees a little a little tight. That's to be expected, I guess. Well, we've already made it down to uh, the junction. Right behind me is uh, the junction for Rafferty Creek and Donahoe Pass and a bunch of other different places, but we're gonna be heading down it says 1.4 to 12 mean meadows. We're not actually going to the meadow per se, because I think the part that they're talking about is actually the store, you know, the major point. This is Rafferty Creek, it's bone dry. But anyway, we only got a few more miles to go. We're gonna do a total of about uh, 25, I think, total on this loop, and about uh, 5.6 or 5.7 today. And we'll be back to the car by, uh, probably by, I don't know, noon, one o'clock, somewhere in there. Can't wait to get a bacon cheeseburger and a ice cold Coke, big glass of ice. All right, well, we're almost back to the car. We're at the uh, 
the double bridges right here as you leave Tuolumne Meadows by the uh, Tuolumne Ice Air Camps. So this has been a nice trip, about a 25 mile loop. And uh, just some absolutely stunning scenery here in Yosemite National Park. Couldn't ask for better weather. We had a little rain a little bit last night and that was it. Other than that, it was in perfect condition. Saw a few deer. Didn't see any bear on this trip. Uh, maybe next time. Anyway, take care. Hope you enjoyed this video. Anthony's Audio Journal. Saying so long from Yosemite National Park. Take care. Coming back to get the camera again. This is the part I hate. Going twice as many miles. Well, now that our trip from Yosemite is over and we're uh, back at the house, um, I've had some time to reflect about some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't work, things that went well, things that maybe didn't go as well as I had hoped. Uh, first of all, um, it's about 109 degrees this week here in my house, and uh, it was just too hot, so the mustache and the beard is gone for now. Maybe it'll make another return come winter, but uh, for right now it's just too hot. I felt kind of like uh, Pedro and uh, Napoleon Dynamite. It was just too hot. At least I didn't shave my head, huh? Well, anyway, um, when we finished our hike and we drove out of Yosemite, the first thing we thought about was we really, really wanted bacon cheeseburger and icy cold Coke. And uh, we ended up driving all the way down to Bishop. A lot of the normal places we go, like Jack's Waffle House, or now it's better known as Jack's, was closed. Uh, a lot of the restaurants that uh, had outdoor seating, had limited outdoor seating, and it was 100 degrees that day. So it really wasn't doable, and they were packed. I'd never seen too many people. Um, on the way out uh, through Bishop, uh, we stopped in Lone Pine to get gas at Lee's Frontier Chevron from our normal spot, uh, one of our normal stops, and talked to the attendant there, and he said he had never seen it so busy. I guess everybody's tired of being cooped up in the house all summer long with the kids, and they just couldn't take it anymore, and they decided they needed a road trip, so they headed up to Mammoth. Um, on the way up there, we stopped in Mammoth to get some supplies, and every restaurant was packed. I mean, so much for the social distancing thing, people wearing masks, because everybody was sitting asshole to elbow, and uh, I just imagine that the numbers in Mammoth are going to continue to rise. But anyway, when we got to Bishop, uh, there was nowhere to eat, so um, our dreams of that bacon cheeseburger went down the toilet, and uh, at the last minute, we decided, you know, Carl's Jr. is better than nothing. So we stopped at Carl's Jr. We went inside. We couldn't eat in there, but we ordered inside, and then we had to take it outside to eat. Um, didn't really want to eat in the parking lot of, uh, you know, of a Carl's Jr. and Bishop. So we drove around a little bit trying to find a nice shady spot, and at noon, uh, there really wasn't any. The one place we did find that was interesting, um, it was an abandoned strip mall, and they had big, giant concrete K-rails set all around the parking lot. And right in the middle of it, they had a bunch of emergency vehicles parked there. And we thought that was kind of odd. They had a couple of outhouses with uh, hand sanitizing stations. And uh, all the buildings in the strip mall were, were abandoned. Uh, the signs were removed off the, the front of the, the businesses. And uh, the only one that was there was the probation department. And then it hit us. It was actually a COVID-19 testing site. So we ended up on the tailgate of Jerry's truck, uh, eating our Carl's Jr. hamburgers at a COVID testing site of all things. But anyway, uh, and while we were there, uh, when we were driving through Independence, uh, I've always wanted to stop at the Independence Courthouse. It's, uh, I guess at one time, and maybe it still is, who knows, is the uh, county seat. It's got a fabulous old building, and one of my favorite movies of all time is a Jeff Daniels movie. It was made in the uh, probably early 90s called Trial and Error. And uh, in the scene, Jeff Daniels gets kicked out of the courthouse, and they make him stay 100 feet away from the courthouse. And uh, so I had to go take a selfie right there on the curb of the courthouse in uh, Independence. So anyway, that's why you see this picture thrown into the video. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick was the family that was camped near us at, uh, at Lyle Canyon. Um, I have nothing against uh, families with kids. In fact, I got a buddy of mine that takes his little kids, and they're little. They're like five and seven, eight years old. He takes them on these long uh, backpack trips, and they carry their own supplies. They carry their own weight. They know what to do. They know how to act. They're very well behaved. Um, this family was just a little too young in my book. Um, when the child is small enough, you got to carry them in a little papoose bag on your chest. Then maybe you shouldn't be hiking five miles into Yosemite. Well, anyway, um, maybe next time they'll think about it twice before they go up to Yosemite. Maybe they'll pick a spot closer to the house. Well, anyway, I hope you like the uh, the episodes. 
in Yosemite National Park and our trip up Rafferty Creek to Vogelsang and back out through Lyle Canyon. And I'll catch you next time in another edition of Anthony's Audio Journal. Take care. Bye-bye.